Here we're going to look at a trick that I've ignored for way too long, and that pertains to partial fraction decomposition. So I always tend to do this just the hard way, but it turns out there's a nice and easy trick that we can use most of the time to make a partial fraction decomposition happen very, very quickly. Now, before we get started, I want to point out that partial fraction decomposition is often used in integral calculus. It's one of the methods of integration that you learn in that course, maybe like in the middle of the semester. And also when you're solving differential equations, especially via the Laplace transform and the inverse Laplace transform, you will often have to make a partial fraction decomposition. So we're actually going to look at three methods for decomposing a rational function using this method, and that is the algebraic way, which is the way that I always do it, the heavy side cover up method. We're going to prove why it works, and then we're going to sketch an overkill method method in order to perform this decomposition. Okay, so let's first look at this algebraic way. So I want to take 7x plus 2 over x minus 1 times x plus 2 and decompose it as a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 2. So my standard method for doing this, which I'm calling the algebraic way for the purposes of this video is to take this equation, which is an equation happening among rational functions, and multiply it so that it is an equation happening among polynomials. So I can do that by clearing the denominators by multiplying by x minus 1 times x plus 2. So let's see, over here on the left hand side, that's going to give us 7x plus 2 because both terms in the denominator are canceled. And then over here on the right hand side, we'll have a times x plus 2 plus b times x minus 1 because only one of those is canceled at a time. Notice that this x minus 1 is going to be canceled by this x minus 1 when we multiply through to that term, but this x plus 2 is going to cancel this x plus 2 when we multiply through. Okay, now I'm going to rearrange this a little bit. So generally, I like to swap the order of this equality. We can do that because equality is symmetric. And also, we'll multiply some things out. So notice I have a plus b times x. So ax plus bx, but then I can take the x out. And then next, I have 2a minus b. And then I'm just going to put a times 1 here. And so those are my constant terms. I get that from a times 2 and b times negative 1. Then I'm just going to write this over here on the other side of the equation, 7x plus 2. And now what we're really using is the fact that the number 1 and the indeterminate x forms a basis of linear polynomials. So we know that the space of linear polynomials forms a vector space. It's a two-dimensional vector space with this basis. So that's why we can do what we generally do when we solve these, and that is set the coefficients of x on either side of the equation equal to each other and the constants on either side of the equation equal to each other. That'll give us a nice system of equations. In this case, it's a plus b equals 7. That's from the coefficients of x. We'll maybe put a red dot for that. And then for the constant terms, which I'll put an orange dot, we'll have 2a minus b equals 2. Now we can solve this using really our favorite method for solving a system of equations. Maybe I'll notice that I have a minus b here and a plus b here. That tells me that I can take these two equations and add them and the b term will be canceled. So if I do that, I'll get a plus 2a is 3a. b minus b cancels, 7 plus 2 is 9, so I get 3a equals 9, which tells me that a equals 3. Then plugging a equals 3 really into any of these equations will net us with b equals 4. So that tells us we could go up here and we could replace a with the number 3 and b with the number 4, and that would be the appropriate partial fraction decomposition. So now we've done this the algebraic way. Okay, before we get on to Heaviside's trick, I want to plug something that's happening on my campus, well, the college where I teach, this upcoming weekend. So 
As some of you may know, some of you may not, I'm an assistant professor of math at Randolph College in Central Virginia. And this March 12th and 13th, which is this upcoming Friday evening, and then most of the day on Saturday, there is a virtual conference on civil discourse. It's free, open to the public, and I think some very interesting and important things are gonna happen in the lectures and sessions at this conference, just in case any of you guys are interested. There's information in the description. Okay, so now let's maybe get to Heaviside's method. Okay, so we just did an algebraic strategy for decomposing this rational function via partial fractions. Now we wanna use something called Heaviside's cover-up method. And so what's Heaviside's cover-up method? Well, we're about to see. So in order to find the coefficient a, all that you need to do is take the left-hand side of this expression and then cover up what's happening in the denominator of this a term. So in other words, we wanna cover, cover up x minus one and then plug in x equals one. So let's see what that gives us. After taking this left-hand side and covering up x minus one, we'll be left with seven x plus two over x plus two. Like I said, we need to evaluate this at x equals one. So if we evaluate that at x equals one, we'll have seven plus two is nine in the numerator, one plus two is three in the denominator, but that's equal to three. Now comparing this a equals three with what we got in the previous method, we'll see that it's exactly the same, so it worked. Now we can do the same thing to find b. So we'll say b happens to be the left-hand side where we cover up the x plus two term and then set x equal to negative two. So y equal to negative two because that's in the denominator of this b term, or that's a root of the denominator. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. That'll give us seven x plus two over x minus one. Again, we're gonna evaluate this at x equals negative two. So plugging in negative two, let's see, that's gonna give us a negative 12 in the numerator and a negative three in the denominator, but that's gonna give us four, which is exactly what we had on the last board. Okay, so we've reproduced our algebraic solution using Heaviside's cover-up method. And now we're ready to quickly look at why it works. So covering up x minus one on the left-hand side, it can be thought of as being algebraically equivalent to multiplying both sides of this equation by x minus one. So let's maybe do that. So I'll notate that by here, we're multiplying both sides of this equation by x minus one. That gives me seven x plus two over x plus two equals a plus b times x minus one over x plus two. So it turns out that we've taken a discontinuity from this term and this term occurring at x equals one, and we've moved it to a zero of this term occurring at x equals one. So that's kind of the idea here. So now we can take this entire equation and set x equal to one, and we'll see, again, this left-hand side will be equal to three, and then this right-hand side will just be equal to a because this term will trend off towards zero. And now we can see that something very, very similar happens if you multiply both sides of this equation by x plus two. So if we multiply both sides by x plus two, we'll be left with seven x plus two over x minus one equals a times x plus two over x minus one plus b. So in fact, what we've done is taken the discontinuity occurring at x equals minus two from these two terms and moved it into a zero occurring at that spot for this term. Now again, we can take all of this and plug in x equals minus two and we'll see that we get b equals four because this term right here trends off towards zero. So we've obviously only looked at a very special case where we can apply this Heaviside's cover-up method, but I urge you guys to look into this more if you want to, and you'll see that this is a really nice trick for doing partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so we've just shown why it worked. 
Now we're gonna look at a bit of an overkill method for finding this decomposition. So I've changed all my X's for Z's because now we're thinking about this as happening with a complex variable. And we're gonna use some notions of complex analysis in order to sketch out this overkill method. I'm gonna focus on the Z equals one spot instead of the Z equals minus two spot because that's essentially the same thing as going on. Okay, so I wanna point out that this thing is something called analytic at Z equals one. And essentially that's just a souped up version of continuity happening on complex valued functions. Whereas this one right here has something called a pole. Well, and it's in fact a pole of order one at Z equals one. And then this guy over here, our starting rational function also has a pole of order one at Z equals one. Next, we can do something called finding the residue of both sides of the equation, but the residue at z equals one of this bit will be equal to zero, again, because that bit is analytic at z equals one. The residue at z equals one of this bit will be a, just by the definition of the residue at a point and the fact that this is just like a over z minus one, as simple as you can get, so that means that A will be equal to the residue at Z equals one of this left-hand side. So this seven Z plus two over Z minus one times Z plus two. Now there's a bunch of reasonable ways to find the residue. You could in fact like take some order of a derivative while multiplying by Z minus one and then plug in some values and you'll see that you get it fairly easily. But since we're trying to overkill this thing, we can use Cauchy's integral formula to maybe soup up this method quite a bit. And what you'll get is that this residue is in fact equal to one over two pi i times the contour integral around this circle, which is like z minus one modulus equals one of our function, seven z plus two over z minus one times z plus two dz. And I'll stop for there because in order to explain all of the details for that, we'd really need to get way in over our heads for the purposes of this video. And that's a good place to stop.